headlines all weekend in Motorland. Aragon have been stolen by the comeback king, Ethan Guevara. Not once, but twice has a young Spaniard battled his way through from 22nd on the grid to win both races and drag himself right into championship contention with Xavi Artigas's lead now cut down to just 15 points ahead of this crucial race with the season finale looming in Valencia in a few weeks' time. It's Jack Affleyard and Lewis Sudderby with you once again here from Aragon with, as you can see, the sun shining, but not for long. It has been changeable conditions all day so far with high winds dragging in grey clouds, followed by blue clouds, followed by grey clouds, which look to be on the horizon and may well be with us by the time this race is out. Fortunately, as these guys go on their sighting lap, Hopefully, we don't have any drama on either this or the warm-up lap, which we've seen in our previous two races. It's almost unheard of that we have guys crashing out on the side snap of the warm-up lap in one race, never mind in consecutive races. That is just how tricky these conditions have been over the past couple of hours and a difficult job for our Dunlop personnel as well as they try to dictate what tyres these guys should be having on. Good afternoon, Lewis. Welcome back once more. And... Uh, as we said at the top there, the same question is pretty simple. Can Ethan Guevara come up with another stunning comeback ride from 22nd on the grid? He's made it look so, so easy so far. You'd be daft to bet against it. Yeah, good afternoon, Jack. It's, it's been an incredible weekend from him. He's shown that pace in the dry and, of course, was caught out by the mixed weather conditions uh, that affected qualifying on Friday. We thought it was an ex exceptional ride to come through the field in race one on, uh, on Saturday. And there was no way he'd possibly repeat it. Well, he did repeat it. Came through the field again to win the race earlier on today. But surely a hat trick. Surely a hat trick's too far to go, is it? Let's see. Here's what happened earlier on today with Guevara. You can't see him at the moment, but you'll see him very, very shortly carving his way through the pack. Crashes at turn one. We saw a couple of riders down, including Senna Aegis, the Australian who unfortunately went out. Artigas, though. He got away with the leading group early on, but his race would soon take a turn for the worse because of a grid infraction with the start procedure, which caused him to take a long lap penalty. We'll certainly be keeping a close eye on the Leopard in Parler squad this time around to make sure they don't make the same mistake, but it's not as if that long lap penalty affected him one jot because he was quickly back in contention after having to drop down to 10th place. There's the confirmation that the number 43 got. He was third at the time, then battled his way up to the race lead before eventually taking it there. With Guevara suddenly in contention, the black helmeted number 28 had made his through from 22nd on the grid one once more to be right in the leading group after just five laps. Artigas trying to come back to the field and that was him picking off Max Cook. He put in a great series of laps to jump back across the gap to the leading group. You can see him just out of the back of the screen. He was detached from this leading group of five, which was led by Pedro Costa, looking to try and right the wrongs of yesterday where he was taken out of the first race of the weekend. But he had Guevara for company. And before long, Artigas was back in touch again. Well, it was an important race for the unlucky Acosta, taken out for the second time this year, which has certainly halted his championship dreams, but he was able to put them back on track to a certain extent by sticking with Ethan Guevara, who once again set the pace at the front. It was too hot for some to handle, with the leading group of eight eventually stretching out with Guevara managing to hold on on the final lap. He pulled off a quite sensational final lap to make it a double win from 22nd on the grid. Quite remarkable from the 16-year-old Mallorcan. Can he do it again? Well, I was about to say, maybe he should start 22nd in every race, but of course this weekend he is because of the way of the uh, qualifying format and the fact that we've got a double header of races here this weekend. We'll see what he can do from there. His teammate once again then, Danny Holgado, will start from pole position, but we've very much got a four-way fight for the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship now as a result of that race earlier today. As we uh, take a look at the weather conditions, the wind has really picked up here, which, uh, as Jack mentioned earlier on, will blow any adverse weather quickly on through. But at the moment, conditions are dry uh, for this FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship race two of the day. And as I mentioned, we've got a genuine four-way fight for the World Championship in this class. Xavi Artigas leads it, but he leads it now by just 15 points from Ethan Guevara with Pedro Acosta and Jose Julian Garcia just 32 points back. This rider, Danny Holgado, 
He's fifth in the championship as he starts from pole position here today for the second time, of course, this afternoon. Uh, and he's got a bit of work to do. He's currently 59 points off the championship lead. So unless uh, he has a big result here, his championship hopes look likely to fade. Chasing, of course, the first win of the year. He's had that one podium back in the first race at Jerez. But he's been very much put in the shade so far by his teammate Guevara, who's been starting 21 places behind him and come racing through the pack. Can Holgado complete a hat-trick of sorts for the Aspar team, even if not a hat-trick for one particular rider? It's a very, very important race for Danny Holgado because he's been shown up by his teammate, to be frank. He started from pole position, yet his teammate, who starts 22nd, has beaten him comfortably on both occasions. He crashed out in race one, a better performance from him in race two by finishing narrowly off the podium in fourth. But Quite frankly, he has to be on the podium today, just for his own sake, to be able to show that he is able to contend with these leading guys. He's shown it in the leading group, but from pole position, when your teammate's starting 22nd, you've got to beat him, surely, and I'm sure that's what will be plan number one for today. The same goes for Josito Garcia, starting second on the grid. It's now back-to-back -back third place finishes, put my teeth in for the 658 Squadra Corsa man. So he's on a, a fine run of form as well, and he'll be hoping to finally jump onto either the first or second step of the podium here in Aragon. It's been an up and down weekend, an up and down year for Pedro Acosta. The only two blots on the copybook there, and through no fault of his own, taken out in Jerez, and also taken out this weekend by Diogo Moreira in race number one. But whenever he's been able to see the chequered flag, he continued that run earlier on today. He's been on the podium. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, as you say, his season record tells you that when he finishes, he's on the podium. So he'll be looking to try and stay out of trouble this afternoon. Lorenzo Fallon, uh, who had a, one of his best races of the season yesterday, finished fourth in the end um, in the race that we had yesterday. Earlier today in the top 10, so he's continuing a pretty strong run now. That's three top 10s in a row for Lorenzo Fallon. Um, and he had a good battle earlier on today with his uh, teammate, his uh, Estrella Galicia teammate, Diogo Moreira, who uh, finished uh, just behind, or just ahead, sorry, in uh, ninth position. A strong result for that team. Moreira, of course, who's uh, played his own part, inadvertently so, in the Junior World Championship battle this weekend. Uh, as we look at Daniel Holgado, just uh, having a word with Nico Tirol before this race. Uh, Tirol giving some moral support and some words of wisdom, no doubt to the pole sitter because I dare say despite starting 21 places further back Ethan Kavara doesn't need any assistance he knows exactly what he's doing as does Max Cook who's finished fifth yesterday couldn't quite hit the same heights today he finished in 11th position but still a strong result for him that's where he sits in the championship as well 11th overall um, it'll be interesting though Jack to see how his body holds up this afternoon with his third race of the weekend given that he's still physically feeling a little bit second hand yeah second hand to put it mildly broke his pelvis just over a month ago in a monster high side at Jerez, but has battled back to fitness. He's still not 100%, but he was able to pick up a career best fifth yesterday. As you said, he was just outside of the top 10 earlier on, but I'm sure he'll be hoping to try and go with the leading group once again today. And then, well, you never know in a Junior World Championship, he may well be able to pick out the winning lottery ticket and find himself on the podium. That's what this man will be hoping to do. Fifth place, the worst result of the year off his own accord. Of course, an eighth place you'll have seen there, that was when he had a coming together with David Munoz. Not the race that we're used to seeing from Xavi Artigas. Of course, he did have the long lap penalty. That was early in the race. Normally, in the final two or three laps, you see Artigas make his way forward to the front of the race and really start to assert his authority. In fact, he got a little bit bullied in the latter stages earlier today. Yeah, he was up and down like a yo-yo in the end in that race, wasn't he? And uh, as you say, complete contrast to what we're usually seeing from him, where he's pretty much nailed at the front of the field. He had that great start, got away in what looked like being a three-rider breakaway at the front as we look at Gerard Ryu, who starts on the front of the third row, seventh on the grid. But Artigas had that long lap penalty, dropped into the second group, made rapid progress to get himself back up to the front again and get himself back in touch, and then reversed back through the field again into fifth, uh, fifth in the end. 11 points for him. As you mentioned, it's his lowest finish of the season, with the exception of that Jerez race, which, of course, was through no fault of his own. A grid procedure infra infraction for the Leopard Impala junior team earlier on today, which cost him... Well, cost him dealing in the end. We can obviously talk about the fact that he did come back in touch with Leaning Group, but we don't quite know how much he took out of his tyre, for instance, by getting back there 
or whether indeed he just got bullied, as you say, in those closing stages of the race. But he will not want a repeat of that because as we're seeing, and we won't see him in this grid lineup because he's so far down, but Ethan Guevara is the emerging threat in the World Championship, which is amazing to say about a rider starting 22nd on the grid. But already this weekend, he has taken 19 points out of Xavi Artigas across two races, and he's now 15 behind. And as you mentioned earlier on, Jack, at the end of race one, a repeat of that result with Guevara Lee taking the victory with Artigas finishing in fifth again, and only one point would separate them going to Valencia. So Artigas will be very keen to up his game and get back into podium form here. Well, it's set up beautifully, isn't it, for our final FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship race of the day. And I'm just thinking, what a funny feeling it must be for the guys on the first and second rows, just knowing that at some point in the early stages, a bloke that's five, six, seven, eight rows back is going to suddenly just appear. Yeah, and he's made it look easy so far this weekend, but trust us, it is not. To make that kind of progress on the first lap, so much could go wrong. And amazingly for Hulk, for uh, Ifeon Guevara, he's got just about everything right so far, with the exception of that rain hit qualifying. But here's the grid lineup. Uh, and as we mentioned, Guevara, you're going to have to wait a little bit of time before we see him appear on our screens. His teammate Danny Holgado that will once again start from pole position. Can he finally put it to good use and find himself on the podium with Garcia and Acosta joining him on row one. Fallon, Cook and championship leader Artigas are there on row two of the grid. With row three, another three contenders, Gerard Rio, Nicolas Spinelli and look out for the Brazilian Diogo Moreira. Yeah, Felipe Palazzi completes the top ten ahead of Fernandez and Fusco. Uh, Salvador starts from 13 ahead of Munoz and Kazuki Masaki with Clement Rouget and Munoz and Senna Aegeus on row six. Remember, Aegeus got involved in a crash at turn one earlier on today. Here are the guys you need to look out for then. On row seven of the grid, Boasri and Ogden have made good progress so far, but no man has made better progress than the 28 of Ethan Guevara. Once again, he starts from row eight of the grid. Can he come up with more Motorland magic? Yes, and on the row 10, we have uh, Asman, Rehacek and Diez. And on the final row of the grid, we have Jose Rueda starting ahead of Hasegawa and uh, Vostatek. He has come from 32nd on the grid twice this weekend to finish 12th and 13th across the two races. So he's gained almost 40 positions on aggregate across his two races already this weekend. Yeah, he's another man that's really gone under the radar, I think, as Jose Rueda, despite only picking up, what, five, six points? Throughout the two days so far, it has been a sensational performance from him and it really doesn't do justice to what he's had to do from the penultimate row of the grid. He'll be hoping to do it again and maybe find himself inside the top ten. He's certainly got experience of it now, as has Ethan Guevara. Reminder that on lap one yesterday, he picked up 11 places. And on lap one earlier today, he picked up the pathetic 10 places instead. So that's what we're dealing with on lap one. Keep your eye on the black helmeted Aspar, number 28 of Ethan Guevara. He'll be the man bobbing and weaving his way through the field. Yeah, and as I mentioned earlier on, it's, he's made it look easy, but it really it isn't because you have to get a good start because that's he's in a position, we're starting so far back, he's basically got to make no mistakes throughout the race. Because if he gets a bad start from 22nd on the grid and finds himself down in 24th or 25th at the end of the first lap, his race in terms of challenging for the win is over. He almost has to make up 9, 10, 11 places on the first lap to get himself in touch before the field starts to split up and then just natural spread of the field leaves him way too far back. So he's having to be aggressive on that very first lap and he is doing exactly that. Uh, but as I mentioned, there's so much that can go wrong on the first half of the race, particularly at turn one, which is so tight and so uh, so congested. Of course, the crash that happened early on in the race involving Senna Regius and uh, Boazri, those two riders started just a, a couple of places ahead of him. Boazri was two places ahead of him on the grid, and Aegeus was four places ahead of him on the grid. It's so easy for an incident like that to take out Guevara if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. The guys on the first and second rows of the grid will be more determined than ever. I can hear the talk between the team manager and the rider at the conclusion of race one today. What on earth are you playing at? Why are you letting a lad from row eight on the grid win the race again? OK, boss, I'll try and stop it this time around. Unfortunately, they've had no response to him so far as Guevara, despite the penalty on Friday, well, not penalty, penalised himself from qualifying all the way down on row eight, has somehow managed to find himself just 15 points now adrift of Xavi Artigas in the fight to become the junior world champion in 2020 and join an illustrious list of names. Meanwhile, we've got a little bit of a tit-for-tat going on as we 
make their way to the grid between, I think that is the number 24 of Leonardo Taccini and his compatriot, Raffaele Fusco. I'm not sure what happened there, but the pair of them were doing some rather uh, interesting hand gestures towards one another. Probably just riling themselves up, ready to go to battle. Six, 15 laps, sorry, ahead of the Junior Moto3 World Championship. The red flag moves away, it's Holgado, Garcia, and Acosta on the front row once again. We wait for the lights to come on and the final bit of Junior World Championship action here in Aragon is underway. A short, sharp burst down to turn one. We've seen Holgado take the whole shot on two occasions so far this weekend and he's done it again. And once again, it's three or four bike lengths clear of Acosta who settles into second. Yeah, they've held station amongst the leading six. The two Leglis, Hosfana riders got pushed way out wide at turn one, both Masaki and Fernandez were on the wrong side of the racetrack, unfortunately for them, at the first corner. Olgado is still leading Garcia, chucking to get up the inside, but he can't quite do it on Acosta, and he's now under pressure from Lorenzo Fallon as they go into the tight left-hander. Artigas is still there, he's still running uh, in sixth at the moment. Uh, I believe I think he's actually gained a place up to fifth as Max Cook has dropped back as they come through the first sector at the moment. Oh, Ethan no Guevara fight. is up five places already to 17. Olgado goes wide, he goes well wide, and he dropped from first down to fourth place. Now fifth is it because both Artigas and Falon are looking for a way through, but fair play to Holgado. He holds on around the outside and keeps himself in third place. An early mistake from Holgado, and that hands the lead to Pedro Acosta. Yeah, it's the last thing he needs. It's uh, a little mini high side there in the middle of the pack as well as the riders fight for grip on the exit of turn nine, and they round turn ten. But it is Acosta at the moment who's got the lead. Garcia's having a look up the inside of him. Acosta, of course, spent more time than most in the lead in the race earlier on today. Guevara, by the way, is 14th already. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. He's doing it again. No jump start. So once again, he's timed that start to perfection. And I'm sure, as we saw earlier in the day, bit of a moment there for one of the Reality of Inter. You guys, and another one, I think that was Adrian Fernandez. Someone's gone straight on. Probably one of the Munoz brothers. It looks like the green of the number seven. Daniel, oh, Daniel Munoz. Munoz. And he's and down he's as well. Down. Yeah, he's crashed out as Daniel Munoz. Disaster for the number seven on the first lap of this race here. And it looks as though it was disaster for Adrian Fernandez as well, because the younger brother of Ralph Fernandez has uh, been caught up in that one and finds himself 18th as a result. Meanwhile, Guevara already up to 11th, 11 places in the space of a lap. He's on the charge once more. Look out for the number 28 because here he comes. Yeah, he is. He, uh, he looked like he got swallowed up a bit on the run down to the final corner, actually, so he might have lost a place. He comes across the line. He is 11th, so he did hold station, but there's already a little bit of a break in the group look as uh, you look at Max Cook. Um, I think might be towards the back of that group as they come through turn one. He crossed the line in eighth position, but I think he got swallowed up a little bit at the end of that straight. Um, but the eight riders at the front are away and clear, and Gerard Ryu leads a second group, which involves Guevara. Well, it looks as though the break in the group here is because of Nicolas Spinelli going down. The man that started from the middle of the second row, he's crashed out at turn 16 and was just ahead of Max Cook in the opening stage of this one. So his crash at turn 16 may well have caused the guys just to sit up a little bit as they flick left for 16 and 17. There he is, the Italian, fortunately walking away. I'm not surprised he looks a little bit battered and bruised as a result of going down at turn 16, this super fast left hander. Holger on the move, up to second, he's past Acosta. Yeah, he is, and uh, Jose Julian Garcia continues to lead the way. He's had a very, very consistent run of late podiums in the last three races, although the last two of those, which have come this weekend, of course, were both thirds. And, of course, if he wants to make a dent into Artigas' championship lead, he wants 25 points. Artigas now looking to demote Holgado another place. He does by taking third, uh, and Holgado drops to fourth. The pole man... Uh, in the wars a little bit in this early stage of the race. He's now going to come under pressure uh, from Lorenzo Fallon, the Australia Galicia rider as well, um, who had a strong ride to fourth yesterday. Uh, he completes this leading quintet at the moment. Ethan Guevara is absolutely flying, by the way, on this lap. He's just done the fastest first and second sectors. Here he is on screen. Get ready for another rapid fastest lap of the race. He did that on lap two of race one yesterday. He did that on lap two of the race earlier on today. And lap two of race two this afternoon, Ethan Guevara is about to smash the fastest lap of the race.
I've got deja vu and not for the first time this weekend because once again Guevara is sticking to the script and he's batting his way through up to this leading group and they're not helping each other the three abreast with Artigas Acosta and Garcia all getting the elbows out as they go through the final corner it's the fastest lap for Guevara a 159.8 it's about 1.7 seconds quicker than the leader incredible incredible the only man to go beneath the two minute barrier the only other man that was in the two minute barriers was a bloke there's only a couple of places behind him, Adrian Fernandez, and he did a two minute point nine. So he's 1.1 seconds quicker than the second fastest man out on track. And he's just carved his way past Salvador as well as they uh, go through the fast left hander there of turn three. Guevara is flying. He's in that leading group. It's not taking him long. I did mention at the end of that first act that there was a bit of a split in that group, which would have been a concern to him, but it's not concerning him at all. He's already passed Salvador and he's just carved up the inside of Marrera too, I think, just as they flash through the frame. I make it sixth position already for him absolutely incredible he's going to break his own record he was up to first in lap six in race one he was at the front of the field by lap five in race two he probably is going to be there by lap four this time around quite sensational from Guevara thought he was going to slow down as we went through the weekend unfortunately for the guys in front of them he's getting quicker and quicker and quicker meanwhile at the front it's still Artigas the championship leader that leads the way Holgado there in second Garcia in third with Falon now in fourth Acosta has just lost out over the past half a lap because he's dropped down to fifth. Yeah, and if you think you're getting deja vu, imagine what these guys will think when they see that <laughs> 28 up with them. They think, oh, not him again. Uh, the rider who just carved his way through the field in race one and race two of this weekend took victories in both from 22nd on the grid, and he's doing it again. And it'll almost be a bit of a mental edge on these riders because these guys know that once he gets to the front, he is so hard to beat. Incredible stuff from Guevara so far, but the same has to be said for Max Cook in the back of the picture there. The number 30, a second race today after suffering a broken pelvis just one month ago, but he's gritting his teeth and trying to go with this leading eight group. Fair play to Max Cook, the Swindonian. He's certainly showing what sort of a warrior he is. Once again, Guevara way faster than everyone else. A two minutes, point one one nine on that lap. The only rider that I can see in the two minutes, well, there were two riders, Marrera just behind him, who's probably taking a nice bit of slipstream from his rival, but also Artigas, a quick lap from him, just inside 201s, and he's pulled out a 310th lead. Perhaps Artigas is well aware that, well aware that Holcado is not only in the group, but uh, well, sorry, that uh, Guevara's not only in the group, but immediately behind him, and Artigas knows that he's got to get his, uh, get his foot on it and uh, increase the pace, because he's already under pressure from not only the, the sort of the main contender in this race, but his main championship contender. I'm honestly lost for words once again. We didn't think he'd be able to go any better. He's going to hit the front on lap four, having started. There he goes, hits the front. Unbelievable from Ethan Guevara. He was 22nd on the grid three and a half laps ago, and now he's leading the Junior World Championship race. He's done it once before, he's done it twice before, but it's still an amazing achievement. What a rider this kid is. I'm almost wondering, the pace he's shown over these first two laps, he might have the pace to just break these guys. It's, he's hit the front, as you say, so early in the race. He might as well just continue on this rhythm, this amazing pace he's setting, and just ask the riders behind him, OK, chaps, how many of you can match this? Because he's able to lap in the late 59s and the low two minutes, whereas everyone else is struggling against everything to try and even do a two minutes point nine at the moment. Artigas will look to try and just latch himself onto the rear wheel of Guevara and try and match his pace. But this is an astonishing ride. We, we've seen it twice already. We've seen this movie twice already. This is the threequel now for Ethan Guevara, but it doesn't get any less impressive, even if he's now losing the lead to Artigas. This is an incredible ride uh, from, from Ethan Guevara as the three championship contenders, the leading three championship contenders, now go wheel to wheel at the front. Well, following him in race one and two hasn't worked so far for Artigas and Acosta, so they're going to have to go for a different tactic. They're going to have to get the elbows and the knees out and try and be as aggressive as possible and not allow Guevara to get into any kind of rhythm at the front, which is easier said than done when he just motors around the outside of them into turn one. Yeah, he's so quick off the corners, isn't he? We've seen in the first two races already, out of turn 15 onto the back straight. He gets such a good run coming out of that corner that there's, there's nothing that anyone can do. Artigas tried it yesterday, and earlier on today, Pedro Acosta tried it. They just couldn't get the inside as Garcia now gets involved. Takes two and one through turn three. The fourth of our championship contenders now getting himself in on the action. 
what a move that was from Garcia. Two in one through the super brave turn number four. He flicked his way through there up the inside of not only Artigas, but Acosta as well. A brilliant move from the 658 Squadra Corsa man. But a move like that and a response from Acosta is just giving Guevara a little bit of a comfort buffer out front. I'm sure it won't be like that for long. But once again, it's Guevara who's more than happy to just lead the way in this race. Yeah, Guevara uh, still leads then. His teammate Holgado is next up behind these top four championship contenders who lead this race at the moment. Holgado runs fifth ahead of David Salvador. Diogo Moreira completes the top seven ahead of Lorenzo Fallon. Then there's a slight gap of just a second to Max Cook, who's running in a little bit of isolation at the moment in ninth position. He's just 1.3 seconds off the back of this, but he's got a comfortable enough buffer at the moment of seven tenths over Adrian Fernandez um, with Kazuki Masaki in 22nd. As I mentioned, those two Luglis Husqvarna's, they didn't really get the uh, the rub of the green through turn one. They found themselves on the outside and got pushed out wide. We saw them come on strong late in the race yesterday, but they're going to have to come from a long way back today. Well, here are the men, one, two, three, four in the championship picture at the moment. Guevara, Acosta, Garcia and Artigas all tucked in behind one another as we go down the back straight. They then fan out three abreast with Acosta and Garcia all managing to find a way through on Guevara and Artigas will follow suit as well. So suddenly in a blink of an eye, the 16 year old New York and he's dropped from first to fourth. Yeah, he's in a good position though now though as they come across the surface line right in front of us out of the window. He's going to get a three bike slipstream as we come into turn one. That just tells you just how windy it is. The rider that that flag is in uh, tribute of uh, currently on the inside of Acosta for third position. Uh, Guevara did manage to take two of the three ahead of him. He's up to second now, with the lead now being held by Jose Julian Garcia, who started that lap in second. So we've seen throughout this weekend, particularly in the European Talent Cup and in this Moto3 classes, Artigas now makes a move, another forceful move on Guevara, who gets beaten up a bit. Acosta's going to take full advantage of that as well and relegate him to fourth. If you lead out of that final corner, you're almost a sitting duck down the main straight because it's such a powerful slipstream here. There's three or four riders who could just power past you on the run down to turn one, and Guevara now has his teammate to worry about. So there we go, suddenly the gloves are off and Ethan Guevara is not having it his own way. Everybody is fed up of watching a 16-year-old. Salvador's taking him too. He has. He's dropped down to sixth place and everybody, well, they're fed up of him. They've had enough of him coming through and making them all look like mugs. So they've decided to get their own back and they pushed him back to sixth place. How will he respond now? Sending him back to where he started. Well, he's got the two Estrella Galicia riders behind him now of Marrera and Felon, who run seventh and eighth. Of course, Marrera has uh, already left his mark on this weekend, not in the way he wanted. Guevara looks like he's shaping up the inside uh, to try and gain some more places. Didn't work out for him, though. He's still, in fact, he's losing another one, I think, there. That looked like Marrera up the inside of him uh, as they go around to 13. And uh, that was, of course, the corner where Marrera and uh, Acosta came together yesterday. Guevara's really having to get his elbows out here to try and stay in some sort of strong position in this leading group as the top three well, well, they're probably half aware of that because, of course, they've gone past him earlier in the lap. They won't know quite how much trouble he's in just behind them. But well, this is an opportunity for them to try and pull away a little bit because the gap has started to form with Holgado running fourth now. Artigas pulls out of the inside. He's going to try and have a go at Acosta. But the top three enjoying a little bit of a comfort zone at the moment. Yeah, this is the first time in all three races we've seen here in Aragon that Ethan Guevara hasn't had things his own way. It looked as though it was going to be that and a little bit more when he eased his way to the front of the race with only four laps completed. But suddenly, everybody has decided to bite back at the 16-year-old and he finds himself coming across the line down in sixth place off the rear of the number 38 of David Salvador. But that will certainly help Guevara when the leading trio are going at each other like that. Yeah, he had, to, uh, he had to check there, did Acosta. He had to slow down a little bit as he was trying to get himself out of turn one, but uh, he's still safe and sound in second. That's Garcia at the inside of Holgado for third, with Guevara still running in sixth at the moment. He might just decide at the moment just to take stock for a little bit and just, just follow these guys. Still like, plenty of time, nine laps to go for, uh, for uh, Guevara to try and make his way through the field. Uh, he's now picking off one. He's now gone back past Salvador for fifth. But still plenty of time to go in this yet, and it doesn't look as if anyone's going to get away from this eight-rider group. So he's, uh, he's able to play the patient game. Unfortunately for Max Cook, the number 30 of all the British talent team bike, it does look as though a second race today with that broken pelvis is just proving too much. He was up there trying to go with the leading group, but he's already dropped down to 12th place now with another couple of riders queuing up behind him. It's a brave effort for him to even take part in this race, but it looks as though that injury is just proving to be a little bit too much. And uh, that comes as no surprise, really, given how competitive it is at the front. Talking of the front, 
front. Still Artigas, your championship leader, that leads the way. Pedro Acosta settled into seconds there as they'll then flick left here for turn 15. Down the back straight to complete lap number seven very shortly. Guevara, meanwhile, has got himself back in front of Salvador, but it looks as though Salvador is edging ever closer to a move back in front of the number 28. He's very shortly going to pop out from behind the black helmeted Aspar machine is the bright yellow helmeted number 38. No way through though, so Guevara will hold on to that top five spot. But this is exactly what Lewis was saying just one lap ago. Artigas will lead out to the final corner, but where will he find himself as we exit turn number one? Yeah, let's have a look. It looks like uh, Holgado's got a very, very good run out of there, and he's going to be up the inside now. Will he lead through turn one? Yes, he does. There are two Estrella Galicia bikes in the seating group, but a shout out for one that you'll see just flashing through the back of the screen there. That's Jose Rueda, 32nd on the grid. Personal best a couple laps ago. He's up 20 places. He's in 12th now and just 3.8 seconds off the lead. He's putting Ethan Guevara to shame with a ride like that. Guevara has picked up 20 places of his own at one stage throughout the race, but it looks as though Rueda is just going to continue his charge forward. He may well have found his glass ceiling now with his last lap very similar to the guys in front of him. Uh, but at the moment, he's well on course for maybe back in a top 10 finish with what is a leading group of eight, maybe, maybe soon to become a leading group of nine with Adrian Fernandez, the bright yellow Husqvarna, just in the back of your picture right there, starting to creep his way forward and into contention. Yeah, he matched the leader whole guard on that last lap, but of course the, uh, the leader across the line was Garcia and then got shuffled back. So he is gradually pulling these guys back in and if they continue to squabble like this, it's going to play into his hands nicely. And of course, it took him a little bit of time yesterday to get in touch with leading group. He only caught them with a couple of laps to go. If he can get there a little bit earlier this time, look at that for a move from Guevara. That's Whoa, very, very contact. tight. The two Aspar riders coming together. He came from way too far back there. He was coming from third position. He was trying to attack for second. And in the end, found his teammate right in the middle of the, of the corner where he was trying to place his Aspar bike. And Nico Tirol will not be pleased with that one. He will have his head in his hands, will Nico Tirol. Contact between the two Aspar teammates with Holgado as a result demoted to seventh and Guevara back to ninth. He's got it all to do all over again. Has the number 28 of Ethan Guevara. That will be music to the ears of the leading three in this race and the leading three up against Guevara in the championship, Acosta, Garcia and Artigas. But he's done it once before. I'm sure he'll be able to do it once again as he tries to close back in onto the rear wheel of Adrian Fernandez, but you're exactly right, Lewis. That was Guevara's mistake. It was a move that he didn't have to make, and he very nearly brought himself down and his teammate too. Yeah, I'm not even sure if he was trying to overtake his teammate initially. He was sitting third as they went into turn 12. He was going up the inside of second place uh, into turn 12, and I'm not even sure whether the leader was actually in his eyesight. He was trying to take second place, and all of a sudden, he couldn't slow the bike down and just met his teammate in the middle, and we it was right on cue. We were talking about how squabbling us leading group would bring Fernandez back into it, and that's exactly what has happened. He was now up to seventh place, I think he's ahead of both of the Aspar bikes who are now finding themselves at the tail of this group in eighth and ninth. We'll have to get another replay of that. You know, I'm not sure, given the fact that he's won both races this weekend from so far down on the grid, his confidence must be absolutely sky high. And you know what? He probably felt like he could do both of them, and he very nearly did as well. Holgado was late on the brakes himself and could across the front end of Guevara. Probably a bit of a racing incident, but it still goes down as a lunge from Guevara to try and take both second and first into turn 12 and there is Nico to roll just to the right of your picture a few uh, dagger eyes coming from the Aspar yeah, team. Yeah, you can imagine the, uh, the the famous hand double hand gesture of calm down might be going out <laughs> to his two riders as they go across the, the uh, checkered fly, across the finish line. Next time round, they are running together at the moment. Guevara looks like he's just taken Holgado at the same corner that they nearly clashed last time around, turn 12. So Guevara, I think, is now up into eighth position, the leader of the two Aspar bikes. Um, but they've now got a lot of ground to make up. Still six laps to go as they cross the line at the end of this lap. So plenty of time for them to make up that ground. Um, but at the moment, the two Aspar riders have got plenty of work to do. Well, David Salvador, for the first time this weekend, is properly announcing himself as a contender to pick up race victory here. He's going to move back a further place thanks to Garcia, but a sixth place finish and a seventh place finish earlier on today. He's always been there this weekend, but he's always been on the periphery. It looks like he's had enough of that and he's wanting to get right amongst it here with now six laps to go. Yeah, he's uh, found himself on the outside though here. Whether he can hold off uh, Artigas, I don't think. Yeah, Artigas on the inside, he takes a second place. 
Uh, Jose Julian Garcia continues to lead it, and for once, the leader across the line led into turn one, although Garcia probably just nailed the Costa as they came out of the final corner and just carrying that momentum on as they went down towards turn one. Um, but yeah, we've still got a nine rider group here at the front. Holgado, in, if anything, is slightly detached from this at the uh, at the back of this group. Whether his, uh, his rhythm has just been disrupted completely by that incident with his teammate, we'll wait and see. He's got to try and regroup now and get himself back onto the tail of this leading group. Artigas now attacking uh, for second place, but he's going to have a rider going right around the outside of him. That looked like Acosta uh, going around the outside on the 37, and it looks like he's done it. That is the long way round of turn number seven. Surely he hasn't. Yes, he has. Oh, no, he hasn't, sorry. The flag of orange in front of Artigas. I thought it was Acosta, but instead he's had to give way in the end. An audacious effort from Acosta. Fair play for even trying, but he sees himself stay there in fourth place. We talk about the whole Gardo possibly just losing his rhythm as a result of that touch from his teammate Guevara. Well, it's certainly not affected Ethan Guevara. He did drop down to ninth place and was a good half a second off the rear of the leading eight riders, but he's right back in amongst it now, settling into six just off the rear of Lorenzo Fallon. And we've not mentioned the Frenchman all race. He's been there all race long, and he's well in contention here of bettering his best result of the year so far, which is uh, came earlier on this weekend, a fourth place finish in race one. Yeah, he said his personal best lap that time round as well, did uh, Fallon. So he's getting quicker as this race goes on. Marrera is uh, dropping out of time screens, and that is why he's gone down at turn 14. That's a corner that caught out a few riders earlier on in the race when some rain started to fall, so hopefully there's no repeat of that uh, this afternoon. Uh, but yeah, that's one rider dropping out of the leading group from Herrera, uh, who's unfortunately, uh, once again this weekend, showing his speed, showing his potential, but also showing his inexperience. Yeah, nothing to show for it in the end, and there is the frustration and the realisation of the Australia Galicia talent team mechanic when he realises that his number 92 rider isn't going to come across the line. He's out of it and out of contention. They're left with just one now, the number five, Lorenzo Fallon, flying that blue flag of the Australia Galicia concern. He's going to try to get going again is the number 92 the young Brazilian he's obviously not going to pick up any points he'll rejoin in 29th place in fact no he's given up the ghost that's it game over he's on his way back home yeah that's also promoted his other teammate Jose Rareda up to 11th place now and he's only a tenth of a second adrift of Gerard Ryu who leads the second group in ninth spot so a top 10 posi posi uh, position still potentially on the cards for Rueda from near enough the back of the grid. We're right at the front. Artigas is now trying to get himself back to the very front and take the lead. Guevara attacking for third as well. He gets up the inside of uh, David Salvador with Acosta now playing a watching brief in fifth position. But it is advantage Artigas, but Guevara has clearly regrouped and he's now back up into the top three. Advantage Artigas, it certainly is, but for how long? That's the question. Only four and a half laps remaining, and these guys are starting to push now as Guevara finally pulls off that two in one move up the inside of both Artigas and Garcia down into turn 12. Brilliant from Guevara. No such mistakes this time around as he hits the front of the race once more. Well, he rehearsed it, didn't he? And of course, his teammate, unfortunately, it was collateral damage for that, but he's uh, he's rehearsed it once and he's now made it stick. His teammate is actually on the uh, move as well further back. We just saw him going up the inside uh, for for sixth position, I believe it was. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. In fact, he's now he's in seventh. He's just got the inside of Lorenzo Fallon. But progress being made by both of the Aspar riders. They have regrouped uh, after that uh, little uh, touch with each other, which, of course, will uh, land them in a bit of trouble with Nico Tirol if neither of them wins the race. Uh, but we shall see. Four laps to go as they come out in the final corner now with Artigas enjoying a slight advantage. Fallon going very wide on the exit of the final corner just in front of us, which will cost him drive down the main straight. But Guevara now having a look up the inside Three abreast into turn one, and Guevara takes second place from Jose Julian Garcia. That's the most defences I've seen Artigas on the run down the start finish straight. He had Guevara tucked in behind him, and he knew that someone was there as well. Meanwhile, we've got another fall here. Ah, it's the number 81 of Senna, Adjuiz, that's gone down. Another disappointment for him after he crashed out on the warm up. He line. crashed at the turn one, didn't he, on the yeah, first race earlier on today? He did, he did. That's the one exactly what happened. And it was his uh, fellow 658 rider, the Australian, that crashed out in the European Talent Cup. Back at the front in this one, though, and here comes Guevara once more, diving through down the inside into turn seven. A little bit of bumping and barging behind as Fernandez is out of the seat. It allows Salvador, Holgado, and Fallon all to have a good look up the inside of the young Spaniard, with two of them going through. Fallon still having to sit there at the back of this group at the moment. But don't discount him. There's only three and a half laps remaining, but Fallon has just as much chance of winning this one as any of the leading eight riders. Yeah, you can imagine the motivation 
position here for Javi Artigas in second place. He's seen Guevara come from 22nd on the grid twice already this weekend to beat him, to just take a bite, which actually then look at that. He, that was, <laughs> he's putting some manners on him. He knows sometimes that's the second time Guevara's found himself on that piece of racetrack. He knew exactly what he was doing there, Javi Artigas. He hung him out to dry, did the number 43. He is fed up with Guevara, making him look a little bit silly this weekend. And the championship leader has flexed his muscles there, just nudging Guevara out wide from turn number 12. That is what we love to see, about three laps to go very shortly, and that is certainly going to ignite one hell of a fight as we come to the start-finish line for the 12th time of asking. Yeah, turn 12 has not been Ethan Guevara's friend in this race, has it? That's twice now, as I mentioned, that he's found that piece of runoff. He's fifth in the train at the moment, so he'll get a, quite a good run out of this final corner as Artigas leads it. Three to go, then. Artigas's lead is next to nothing, and as you can see now, it's almost disappearing. Once again, he takes that defensive line, but is Garcia going to go around the outside of him? Yes, he does. So that defensive line down the main straight did not serve Artigas well at all. Guevara's pulled one position back now. He's gone up the inside and taken Salvador for fourth position. But well, this is what we were talking about with Artigas earlier on. He was up and down the field like a yo-yo. This time it's Guevara who's having a bit of a messy outcome, but he still looks rapidly fast while he's doing it. He certainly does, and you can be almost guaranteed if he gets alongside as he makes a mistake there, he's pushed a little bit wide by Salvador, and it's allowed two men to go through. Holgado, his teammate, also capitalising, but here comes Guevara biting back on the teammate Holgado. It's all changed once again, but he has to battle his way back through, and what I was going to say is I can understand why Artigas put in a move like that on Guevara, because this is such a pivotal race. If they're first and second, a 10-point swing in this championship either way could be absolutely vital. Artigas either heads to Valencia 20 points in front or just 10. And I know it's only 10 points, but when you're dealing with 20-point lead or a 10-point lead, it's absolutely huge. Especially with three races still to come at Valencia in a few weeks' time. If it's only 10 points, then Guevara would know that if he wins all three races in Valencia, he wins the title whatever Artigas does, but plenty of water to flow under the bridge before then, because it's Jose Julian Garcia, who we should not rule out. He's fourth in the points at the moment, 32 off the lead. He can slingshot himself right into contention with a victory here. Pedro Costa looking to do the same. He's now third in the queue in third position uh, and third in the championship. Artigas now having a look uh, at the, up the inside. He's in the slipstream down this back straight. We'll keep an eye as we go on to the wide shot. Here we go on Guevara. He's fourth at the moment, but he's got Salvador for company. The top four in the championship once again are the top four in the race with just two laps to go as they cross the line here. What a finish this is going to be in Motoland, Aragon. We've had two belting FIM Junior Moto3 World Championship races so far, and this looks like being the best one yet. It's going to go right right down to the wire here now just two laps left and here comes Garcia looking up the inside no way through there is a way through for Guevara though as Ethan Guevara already a two-time race winner this weekend plots himself into third place a prime position for the 16 year old with one and a half laps remaining yeah let's see what Garcia then does through this fast left we've seen him look pretty aggressive here on a couple of occasions already and he's having a look again at the inside he can't quite get it through his nose it's chopped off by Artigas who saw that move coming elsewhere of course it looks like he's getting beaten up as well he's lost another one I think to Sal Salvador, who's got the inside of him. Indeed, the 38 passes the 37, and Guevara is now, he's trying to go around the outside of Garcia and does it. What a move by Ethan Guevara. So smooth. Rolls around the outside of Jose Garcia at turn number seven. Incredible stuff. He's just able to pick people off at absolute will wherever he wants. We've already seen him overtake two men on the brakes into turn 12. Don't be surprised if we see him dive past Artigas in one corner's time as they drop downhill into turn 12. Here we are. They're going to flick left over the brim of the hill at He's turn the 11. Already, Jack. He's already done it at turn 11. Who needs turn 12 when he can just drive through at turn 11? And Guevara hits the front with just over a lap to go. Penny for the thoughts of Xavi Artigas now, who's just seen Guevara, who he eased off the road at turn 12 a couple laps ago, just steam up the inside of him to take the lead with a lap and a half to go. This is going to be such an interesting final lap. What kind of approach does Artigas take here? He's the championship leader, but given that the guy who's closest to him is now up ahead of him, he can't really play that careful championship game. He's just got to go out on the attack. Guevara is like a bad smell to Xavi Artigas. He just cannot get rid of it, no matter what he tries. He's currently second. They're going to start the final lap with Guevara, Artigas, Garcia, Holgado, and Acosta. Nothing separating the top five. Here we go. 5.1 
kilometres, just one lap to go. Is anybody's for the taking here in Aragon? Oh, they nearly hit the pit boards as they go past. Guevara did his best to try and hold the defensive line, but Artigas up the inside of him and he forces him wide. That's a key move, that. It's forced Guevara way out wide and he's lost the place also to Jose Julian Garcia. So uh, Guevara down to third. Remember, in the first two races this weekend, Guevara has been so strong out of turn 15 down to the final corner. If he leads out of there, they won't see which way he went. Oh, there he goes once more. A brave move up the inside of turn four. Now back into second. There goes Pedro Acosta. No, David Salvador it is. Through into third place as Garcia gets beaten up. He's moved from second to fourth. And here's the change for the lead, is it? A look up the inside into turn seven. He had a big lunge, but no way through. Artiga so hard on the brakes. This could be a damaging lap for Pedro Acosta. He's losing a lot of ground on this lap. He's come through the last checkpoint in sixth position, and he might be even lower than that. These are crucial championship points that could be disappearing out of the window for Pedro oh, Acosta. Big crash, big crash. Adrian Fernandez is spat over the top of his Husqvarna. Fortunately, he's up on his feet and running away. But that was a big, big moment. He was in the back of the pack, so it's not affected the leading contenders. They've not had to sit up, and it's still with half a lap remaining. Artigas versus Guevara. They've been able to detach themselves ever so slightly with Holgado aware of that. And there he goes through into third place. We've only got a couple of corners remaining. Guevara's chance here will be out of turn 15. If he can follow Artigas through this left-hander that's coming up after this right that they go through now, they'll tip it right, then tip it left. Can Guevara get himself into the slipstream and draft past Artigas down to the final corner. If the move's going to happen, it's going to happen here. Well, Salvador's block passing to turn 14 has completely stopped any chance of those guys third and backwards from winning this race. It's down to these two men, as it has been all weekend long. Xavi Artigas versus Ethan Guevara. Here comes Guevara looking up the inside. Can he get the job done? Yes, he can. He manages to go through at turn 16. Can he hold it? Here comes Artigas. Artigas has got it on the cutback, and he's sweet sweet revenge surely for Xavi Artigas Guevara will try and Guevara takes it it's unbelievable by 17 one thousandths of a second one of the great performances in FIM CV Repsol history a hat-trick of wins from 20 seconds on the grid remember the name Ethan Guevara how did he do that everything that went on in his race from 20 seconds on the grid he made all that progress he led within about four laps then he dropped back twice. The collision with his teammate, he was eased wide by Artigas, and he still pinches it on the finish line. His teammate, by the way, uh, Daniel Holgado, looked like there was a little bit of uh, arguing, a little bit of handbags across the line with, I think it was David Salvador, who ended up taking third position. They seemed to be aiming maybe a, an arm or a leg at each other as they came across the line, but I'm sure they'll calm down. A podium for Salvador, but an incredible third victory of the weekend from 22nd on the grid. I know we've said it a few times, but it doesn't get any less impressive. Guevara does the hat trick. Wow, wow, wow. What a ride from Ethan Guevara. He was forced to work with that one on a number of occasions. He was pushed wide. The elbows were out from Xavi Artigas. But every single time he battled back, despite running wide at the final corner, he managed to get the perfect run out of turn 17 and draft his way to the chequered flag. The pair of them nearly touched before they took the chequered flag too. And in the end, just 17 one thousandths of a second separated them. Here's a replay of it. Here's exactly what happened through turns 16 and 17. Guevara hit the front, back came Artigas, but he wasn't giving up just there. As they came out of the final corner, buried beneath the bubble, here he comes, pulling out of the slipstream. Artigas tries to stop him and pulls across him, nearly contact between the pair of them, but just by half a wheel, it's Ethan Guevara to complete a hat-trick of wins. Oh, what a race it was. They certainly saved the best till last at the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship, guys. And Xavi Artigas, well, I'm absolutely guaranteed that he will be spitting feathers when he gets into Park Ferme because suddenly that 10-point swing we were talking about was gone in the favour of that man in the back of your picture there, the number 28 of Ethan Guevara. David Salvador is on the podium, fair play to him for only the second time this year. He's managed to back up a promising weekend with six and seven place finishes by finally standing on the box with a last lap move of himself on the likes of Garcia and Holgado. But understandably, we're focusing on that battle between Guevara and Artigas. It was 15 points coming into this one with less than 10 metres before the chequered flag it was 20 points, but now Guevara is just 10 points behind Xavi Artigas heading into the season finale in Valencia. Three races there. You do not want to miss them.
Well, we've still got one more race to go after that one, the European Moto2 Championship. Hopefully they can deliver after what was once again a brilliant race earlier in the day, but that was the best we've had so far. Look at the celebrations from Ethan Guevara. There is Nico Tirol celebrating with the rest of the Aspar squad as well. David Alonso, the man leading the European Talent Cup, he's there giving a high five to Ethan Guevara as well. He's hoping to emulate him this year by picking up the championship that Guevara won last year, and look at that. That is a look of frustration from Xavi Artigas. Here's what's happened with Fernandez. Yeah, a nasty high side. Got caught up with the bike as well in the final lap. And that was unfortunate for Lorenzo Fallon. He had to back out and in the end came across the line in seventh place. But look at this as he came across the line. The elbow was out and the thump of the tank from Artigas. He could not believe that Guevara had done him again. What a race, what a race. Polar opposite emotions from the number 28 and the 43, the 28 to the right of your picture, fist pumping in pure elation and it's utter agony for Xavi Artigas as he sees his championship lead cut down even further now, just 10 points in it. So there's David Salvador, he's picked up the final podium place. Great, great ride from him in the end. Good work from the number 38, David Salvador, the 17-year-old, jumping onto the podium for just the second time this year, and only the second time in his career. He came into this year for the best ever finish of sixth place. Well, he certainly made great strides this year as the 17-year-old from Madrid to be a regular front runner. Fourth place, as we said, going the way of Jose Garcia. It does wrap up a good weekend for the Sitch 58 squad recourse man. Third, third, fourth, certainly a good, consistent weekend for him. But if we're talking about good weekends, then we've got to mention that one. 25, 25, 25, a hat-trick of wins at Aragon. And goodness gracious me, was a force to work from. And we said it after race two earlier on today, that when he went to sleep on Friday night, having qualified 22nd on the grid, in his wildest dreams, he would not have thought he'd be walking away from Aragon on Sunday evening with three victories and now find himself just 10 points away from the title leader, Xavi Artigas. Let's not forget this man is a rookie, just 16 years of age, but what a talent he is. Let's hear from Open Bank Aspar team's Ethan Guevara after he made it three out of three here in Aragon. Ethan Guevara, maybe you should start from 22nd on the grid for every race. Another incredible comeback through the field. You had a moment with your teammate, you had battles with Xavi Artigas, and an incredible final lap. Talk us through it. Yeah, no words. <laughs> uh, incredible race. Uh, 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 the race is very difficult, but uh, because I don't know why not to allow this. I like to, my I. I I'd like to thank my team uh, for the work on the weekend. Uh, incredible. Three, three races consecutive in Moto3, my first year. It's incredible. Uh, uh, no words. ¿Y la español? Bueno, ha sido una carrera muy difícil. Volvíamos a la partida en la P22 y tenemos que remontar como lo habíamos hecho en las otras carreras. Eh, pero en esta carrera hacía un poco más de viento, la moto, la moto eh, llevaba, eh, llevaba mucho tiempo al corte y, y el motor estaba sufriendo, pero bueno, hemos, hemos podido llegar y yo creo que la mejor carrera de mi vida, eh, la batalla que tiene con Chávez Artigas ha sido brutal en la última curva y, y solo tengo palabras de agradecimiento para mi equipo por todo el trabajo que ha he hecho este fin de semana y para mi familia que está viendo la carrera desde casa y a mis sponsors. Congratulations. Thank you. Ethan Guevara made it a hat-trick of wins at Motoland Aragon, all three of which coming from a quite remarkable row eight of the grid. He managed to hit the front after six laps in race one, five in race two, and he went one better here by hitting the front after just four laps had been completed. His title rivals had absolutely nothing to say for him. Meanwhile, a 
an incident involving David Munoz and Adrian Fernandez forced them to have some early problems, more so for Munoz as he crashed out. At the front, though, championship leader Xavi Artigas was trying his best to stretch the pack and stop the charging Guevara from eventually reaching them, but with Acosta, Garcia and eventually Holgado all trying to get amongst it, it was no surprise that Guevara eventually reached him. He then had that moment with his teammate. He tried to lunge up the inside of second and first to hit the front, got it wrong and clipped the rear wheel of Holgado. A huge scare, but somehow both himself and his teammate managed to stay on. Diogo Moreira crashed out of the leading group with five laps remaining and then it was left to just eight riders to battle it out for the final victory of the weekend here in Aragon. Artigas would lead on the final lap but Guevara would bite back finding a move through at turn number 12. Unperturbed Artigas would suddenly find a second wind of his own trying to push Guevara as wide as is humanly possible as he went through turn one one final time and the last lap Adrian Fernandez high sided out quite spectacularly fortunately getting up and walking away and then into the final corner Guevara dived through Artigas would cut back but that wasn't it because here come Guevara once more he's won once twice and now three times this time by just 17 one thousandths of a second his best win yet what a sensational race it was in the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship. Congratulations to Amadeo Meamo. Surely not Amadeo Meamo. That means his name is Amadeo My Name. Oh well, anyway, not to pick fun out of his name because he's just won for the third time this weekend the team award for the Open Bank and Spa squad. Three on the bounce. Yeah, his name will be on everybody's lips, won't it? Ethan Guevara, he'll be the uh, the talk of the Moto3 Junior World Championship and uh, You've got to think the Aspar team, they'll be watching that and that will be sending out a very clear message to them when they eye up their team for the future. Of course, as we mentioned earlier on today, there is the potential for a Moto3 Grand Prix World Championship ride up for grabs. And you can't make a better case than that with three wins from 20 second on the grid. He's Collectively, he's overtaken 63 riders in three races and three victories. Incredible, absolutely incredible. Jorge Martinez Aspar, if you have that contract, give it to him now. Let him sign it and put him on the World Championship grid next year. And he's probably put more overtakes than that one, actually, because he had to overtake a few people three or four times today, given that he dropped back once with the incident with his teammate, then dropped back again after Artigas put some manners on him at turn 12. But none of that could stop Ethan Guevara. A final corner, 17 thousandths of a second in the end, and a third victory in a row, and a fourth win in five races. He's now taken 120 points from the last 125 available. Once again, it's a Spanish all top three here in the Moto3 Junior World Championship. David Salvador onto the box for the second time this year, probably the most disappointing second place of Artigas' career, but the Spanish national anthem for Guevara. If you can continue putting in performances like that over the next couple of years, that is a scene that we're going to get very used to, not only on the FIM CV Repsol stage, but on the world stage as well. That is how good Ethan Guevara is. The 2019 European Talent Cup winner and now bang in the mix to become the 2020 Junior World Champion. And having won the last three races in a row, having won the last four out of five, who would bet against him going on to Valencia and overtaking Artigas and taking that crown? And the maths are quite simple. If he continues at that rate, if he wins the three races we have in Valencia, he wins the championship with 10 points behind him. He could end up going into the final race level with Artigas if they continue finishing first and second. But of course, it's never as simple as that in the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship. Guevara, the winner then, by 17 thousandths of a second ahead of David Salvador, Pedro Acosta,
get some good fortune after the race, gaining two places as Jose Julian Garcia and Danny Holgado both demoted a place for exceeding track limits on the final lap. How crucial could those extra points be to Acosta by the end of the season in Valencia? Lorenzo fell on taking seventh ahead of Kazuki Masaki with Gerard Ryu and Jose Antonio Rueda completed the top 10. Remember, Rueda started 32nd. Big kudos to Max Cook, battling his way, gritting his teeth to finish 11th despite that broken pelvis. He'll walk away from this weekend, I'm so extremely proud of the performances he's put in, walking away with a best ever finish of fifth in the first race of the weekend. Further down, Tachikon Bawazwi just gets in ahead of his junior talent team counterpart, Takuma Matsuyama, with the final top 20 place going away of Saifuridin Asman. A couple of notable non-finishers on the final laps as well. Adrian Fernandez crashing out and remounting, it looks like, to be able to uh, come across in 28th with Diogo Moreira crashing out with six laps to go out of the leading group. But here's the championship picture then. Just 10 points at the top now. Remember, 75 on offer at the final round in Valencia. So any one of those top six riders theoretically could be crowned champion in Valencia. Yeah, it looks like a straight fight, doesn't it? It looks like the top two have distanced themselves a little bit this weekend. Acosta, as I mentioned, with those two positions gained after the flag here has gained a couple of points. They keep him 39 behind, but it looks like those two are breaking away. Max Cook. He's 11th in the championship as a result of that result here today. He has 39 points just ahead of Lorenzo Fallon and Jose Antonio Rueda. Eddie Van Erde is still 19th in the championship. Of course, we wish him well and hope to see him back in action at the final round in Valencia. He has seven points just ahead of Clément Rouget, Julian Giral, Joel Kelso, Josh Watley, uh, in 23rd position, he has five points ahead of Mario Aggi and Nicholas Spinelli. Uh, Tachkon Boaz Ryu's uh, not had the best of luck today, nor has Senna Aegis. They're 26th and 27th, and uh, that completes our point scorers. But those two riders in picture, Xavi Artigas and Ethan Guevara, nothing to split them today. Guevara with the edge, and very little separates them. It's game on as we head towards the championship decider in Valencia in a few weeks' time.